Hello, I'm Omnisai, your Game Master, this evening here in my lair. It is once more I, Rob, here in the Lair of Omnisai. And today we have a special bit of entertainment for you. Uh, my unboxing videos have been fairly popular. People seem to like them. And, uh, well, I don't do subscription boxes anymore, but I have done a couple of Kickstarters. And I finally, finally can say that my Kickstarter for the game Massive Darkness has finally arrived in a rather large box, as is appropriate. With this Kickstarter, I worked with my gaming group. I'm like, guys, this is a game that when we have it, we will have a backup game anytime. It'll be role-playing still, role-playing light, but tactical and something that I can play on those rainy days when we don't have enough people. It even allows solitaire play, so uh, as far as I, you know, I've, I've read in the rules and such, it uh, should be good. Although the solo play would probably be pretty challenging with the Wandering Monsters and such. But it has arrived, I'm going to do an unboxing on it. Now, background, first of all, like I said, my friends helped me kickstart this. So, um, one of them actually bought one of the packs. Um, this game is extremely late, in my opinion. I know there are games that go on for years without, but honestly, I really question how much the people or companies behind the games that are that late really committed to their games. This one, it's a company that's a known quantity. They've done Kickstarter games before, cool mini or not. And based on their claim that they had done several Kickstarter campaigns successfully, I was optimistic. Had I known that it was going to be, you know, five months late from when they said the ship date was, I would have held off, quite honestly. I'm not real happy with them. But I'm going to try to banish that, and we're going to try to be objective and excited about this game, and hope that it delivers with all the quality that they promised. So, um, I'm, it's, it's rather large. I'm going to zoom back a bit. You'll get to see some of my... A little bit more of my gaming space, but uh, give me just one moment and I'll get us a better perspective right, on things. Thanks. So, big box. Remember, don't do anything small. All right. So, Wakazashi in hand. For those who are curious, this is a kind of a garbage uh, set of Kitana Wakazashi Tanto that I got at a Gen Con a long time ago. It's not in any real esteem, it's just I like the the gold, uh, silver and black wrappings. But they are very sharp. So it's got that going for it. I suppose I shouldn't say they're garbage. They're functional weapons. I just wouldn't want to go all, you know, zombie killing up with them. All right, I'm going to tilt it down. I'm going to lay this down so you can see the things as they come out. All right. So I'm going to take this big box. I'm going to put it outside and I'll draw the things out for you. Little music. All right. So here we go with this big box. And it's full of boxes. 
Fancy that. When we get to the opening and details, I'll show more. Okay, first of all, they had a flaw in their printing on some of the cards. Part of what held us back for a few weeks was they made a reprint for cards that didn't print out right, weren't uh, legible. So they held things up so that they could reship these replacement cards so they wouldn't have to ship out and mass mailing a lot of these. I can understand it as a cost-saving venture. They were already going to have to pay to ship these out, and honestly, throwing these in the boxes wasn't a big deal. But these boxes came shipped from China, and then they had to open them up and throw these in. So, Okay, well, I got the replacement cards, so I, I'm, I'm should be good to go right out of the box. So, from one of my players specifically fell in love with the Elemental box set. It should have four little figures in there. And uh, that's one enemy box. We also have Ratlings. Which, honestly, when I got, I chose them not so much because I thought they'd be a wonderful addition to Massive Darkness, and they should be. But I kind of like the idea of rat races between were-rats and Skaven and Ratlings in various games. I have a real value for those regardless. And I have a few ideas for things in the future that we'll be using them. So, we have that. We have the enemy box of troglodytes. Now troglodytes, for those who kickstarted the game, this was free added on. Um, so I didn't have to buy another set. I know some people it wasn't as clearly uh, explained. They didn't read the, the, the campaign notes or anything as well. I don't know. But uh, I only got the one because I knew they were coming. So, uh, Also we have the Reptosaurians. Now their troglodytes look like just grumpy cave humans. And we'll look into that a little bit closer. The Reptosaurians look more like, well, troglodytes or lizard men. And um, I thought that was a nice race. Also, um, in terms of my miniatures, most of my lizard men aren't all that dynamic. They had some nice poses, some nice uh, molds from what they showed in the campaign that I thought I could really get behind. And Lord, there's still more things in here. So, now we have the Heroes and Monster Pack. This is the Blood Moon Assassins versus the Elephant. I wanted these because I wanted my players and myself to have as many options as possible in terms of the characters they can play as well as the classes that that unlocks. And, you know, the boss monsters look pretty cool, too. The elephant looks something out of uh, um, Indian culture, nightmarish, kind of a Ganesh goes horribly awry. Um, so that's that one. And the next one is the Warrior Priests versus the Shield Maiden Cyclops. The Shield Maiden Cyclops is a fantastic sculpt from everything I've seen. The picture in the back seems to bear it up. And again, three more characters to choose from. And uh, I believe that also opens up a new class. Uh, so, yeah, that was something I was excited for. And then we have Sorcerers versus Lord Tusk. Lord Tusk is kind of a bit of um, a bugaboo because the print... Or the mold apparently had to get changed, and he doesn't quite have the tusks as much anymore. But again, I'll be interested in unwrapping and showing that to you. We, all, we also have magic here, because there's a box. So of course she is. So, yes, you can enjoy the box. The box is yours. And then we also have the Noble Warriors versus the Cockatrix. Now, Cockatrice and D&D are small. They're, they're a little bit bigger than chickens. Um, with lots of nasty abilities and things. Uh, this one's a large monster, as is fitting the wandering monsters in this game. I suspect that I'll be able to figure out some way to make this work in one of my, one of my games. I'm pretty confident in that. Then we have the Latebringer pack. This is a pack with all of the add-on miniatures that the Kickstarter campaign came up with. And it's quite hefty. So, 
if they were going to put out any kind of I'm sorry for how late it is, this goes a long way towards that, quite honestly. Um, but we'll see when we see the figures. This is Chests and Pillars, which, honestly, I didn't get any expansion pack. That must have been another add-on through the, the campaign. Matter of fact, I think I'm almost positive it was another uh, expansion that got unlocked as the campaign wore on. And then finally, I say finally, but in essence, we have the core game itself. <sighs> So, on top of all of these boxes, there's eight different expansions here, and the pillars and chests, and the light bringers, and we have finally the game itself, which is a large box, supposedly chock full of, of everything inside of it. Now, as far as the individual components here, um, for this, I'm only going to do the uh, the stuff for the Kickstarter. I'm going to open up the expansion pack, and we're gonna and we'll wrap this up. I will be doing an unboxing video of the core game itself, as well as uh, each of these expansions. Just because you know, I, the longer the video, I don't want you to be bored. Really, what this comes down to is a uh, celebration of sorts of finally getting this Kickstarter in my hands um, even though I'm months late on you know painting all the figures and everything <laughs> magic seems to be pretty happy about it hey box so um, <laughs> I think my cat is more excited than I am honestly um, so yeah we'll get into showing you what's in this box And uh, we'll go forward from there. Uh, stay tuned. I'll turn this into a three-part. The next one will be about the game, the stuff inside of it, um, all the bits and pieces. Then we'll go into all the boxes. Then we'll have three separate videos for this unboxing. So, looking into the Lightbringer pack, we have... Now, uh, that's right. Part of the expansion for uh, the Kickstarter was uh, lava and crystal tiles to expand gameplay. So they have a, a little campaign notebook that includes elements for the lava and crystal tiles that should be in here. We have a box with a tray. All right. Now, now comes the part where I'm excited because I'm looking at new miniatures of mine and just looking at it right now, damn, it looks as good as advertised. But I think for this, we're going to change perspective and I'm going to go for a little bit more close up. And you guys can see the detailing that I'm seeing right now. So we'll just draw you back in. All right, here we are back again. Um, again, we've got a quest of crystal and lava. This is the expansion for the crystal and lava tiles, which uh, come in the Lightbringer expansion. And with the first tray, we have the Cliffbreaker Cyclops. And uh, just as they advertised, he is huge. He is a very large character. To contrast <laughs> with my uh, my druid of the uh, holy herb a uh, character they made a long time ago um, for comparison's sake yeah he is about comes up just to the belt with the top of his uh, herbs and as a result the mass overall this one is clearly about two times as massive three times if you include the huge boulder that he is set to squish somebody with so, a uh, very nice character. Looking at the mold and everything, he's got a broken off horn, which I believe is intentional. Um, I may have to look into that. But uh, otherwise, detailing-wise, he looks very good. This will be a fun, fun one to paint. He does have a melee weapon at his side, so he's not just about chucking that huge boulder. We have 
can't remember if this is called the Hell Lord, but it's it's a nice demon with a big axe, tail, everything, all of it, very nicely sculpted, nice detail, not complaining about that, looks good. This is, I believe, the Ogre. I'm not pulling out the cards and everything for this stuff. I'm just going to show you the quality of the molds. Now, when I backed this, I was under the impression that the Wandering Monsters were all going to be considerably bigger. Uh, this guy is, again, a little bit more than up to the belt of the uh, Cliff Breaker. But he is large enough, massive enough, with a suitably huge weapon that... Yeah, he's... He's fine for being a wandering monster slash boss. I'm, I'm, I have no problem with that. Then we go with Nightmare Beast. Nightmare Beast is lar very large. Uh, lots of fun tentacles, tendrils, writhing about. Um, he looks like something that's in torment and is ready to do significant harm to a whole party of adventurers at a time. So that's nice. Uh, this is, I believe, the low troll. Um, just a big, good troll character with a massive hammer. Um, good detailing, lots of warts. Uh, the mini is nice. I like it. Um, he'll also be a lot of fun to paint. Uh, probably in some shade with some green in it. We have the Werebear. Werebear is fun. Um, this would actually work nice in my uh, werewolf game if I had a tactical side to it, but I really don't. Um, but he looks suitably ticked off. He's got even down to the little tail in the back. His detailing is nice. Um, for some reason, uh, everything has uh, extra bits. It's not content just to have his normal jaw. He's also got this kind of strap-on moose jaw type uh, enhancement to his bite and he also has this nasty little punch dagger uh, uh, sleeve glove shield glove um, for extra damage for melee so he's again a nicely detailed figure certainly uh, certainly enjoyed that now this is one I believe this was where I really started celebrating getting into this this is their I can't remember overseer I believe it's called um, that is the stuff nightmares are made out of. I believe all those orbs are different eyes in the picture, and I'm going to certainly try to paint it faithfully to... Most of these I'm going to try to paint faithfully to the pictures. There's not a lot of variants that I intend to do, because honestly I thought they did a really good job of imagining the characters, and I want to see my characters looking somewhat like that. Sleeve number one. So next we go to sleeve number two. Oh, uh, they fell off. All right. Now here's a character that they only had concept art at first, but this is the Mad Unicorn, and it's a beautiful figure. Um, I have a couple of unicorns, but uh, this one, huge flowy tail, um, delicate legs. The horn is is great. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a fun figure. That's going to be a, a dream to paint. And then we have a werewolf, another wandering monster, um, a little on the scrawny side for, for something that, uh, should challenge a whole party, but, uh, the mold is nice. It definitely, you can tell what it is just by looking at it. It's got a cool soul patch, little chin chin whisker thing going on. I'm pretty sure that's not a tongue. Doesn't look like it. Um, just enough on the the pants so that he's not running around indecently. And yeah, it's a, it's a nice nice figure, although it's one of the smallest of the lot. Alright, and then we look at this fellow. A uh, little bit of a hunchback going on there. But uh, he looks like he's ready to mess you up with his Morning Star. Uh, big knife on one side. Um, modeled. Kind of gruesome looking. Let me get 
Unfortunately, it really would have been cool if they would have put the names for these things on the bottom instead of just 42. It's a little less useful. And once these are out of the tray, I'm really kind of going to despair for how I'm going to find the way for them to all go back. It's going to be a little bit tough. We have, I believe his name was Kunha. He's a mummy lord with the Kopesh sword. A uh, huge chin thing from his death mask. Um, again, not as large and intimidating as um, I kind of envisioned him to be, but you know, quite honestly, a mummy would be about human size, so that's uh, understandable. We have the Iron Golem with his large beat stick, which is about the size of a person. Big, uh, quite a bit, a little bit bigger than my uh, hippie druid. Um, but he looks massive and um, not too much bigger than humans, about uh, standing a couple hand spans taller in scale. But uh, the indomitable pose and everything, the detailing on it looks quite nice. Um, another one that's going to be a lot of fun to paint, although I'm going to try to bend that mace back so it's a little straighter. We have, I think his name is Ned and Ted, the two-headed... Um, two-headed ogre. A little too small for an Etten. I would say this is a two-headed ogre. But uh, axe on one side, this kind of gnarled mace slash scythe-edged weapon on the other. And he has a caber across his back that he could chuck or break up uh, formations in front of him if he's smart enough to use it. Um, just a big, strong-looking character. Um, again, to scale with the Siegebreaker Cyclops, he's fairly small compared to the, the, the ogre with a big warhammer. He's a little bigger, so scale-wise he fits in the middle of, of pretty much everybody. I think? It's, it's, a little, it's been a while since I've looked at the page because, well, I got tired of looking at the page. But uh, I think this is the Flesh Golem. Got a big mace. Lots of spikes on the armor. Detailing, again, is quite good. These will be easier to identify once I have the cards out and everything. Right now I'm just admiring the product. This is the Oni. Again, kind of a tiny Oni. But he's got the Tetsubo in one hand, and he's got a kind of a scything bladed spear in the other. Um knotted cord around his back. Again, some detailing from the art that they managed to preserve on the figure itself. Again, rather slender for a guy who looks like he wants to melee, but um, I can't argue with the results. The detailing looks quite good. Um, another ogre. Again, they like the punching glove thing. And he's also got a nasty looking kind of a homemade spine axe. Um, kind of a brutish weapon, but it works. Crude clothing and everything looks good. Solid character. Definitely, uh, as a wandering monster, he'll probably be quite tough. And... This guy... Oh, this is the Flesh Golem. You can tell because he's got the... Excuse me. He has a sword sticking out of his shoulder. Uncaringly. He's got a cleaver in one hand. He's got a large chain with a hook at the end, kind of a Kasari weapon, Kasari Gama, I believe it's called. Um, overall, the figure is uh, solidly built. Um, not a great deal of... If it's a flesh column, you don't see a lot of the stitchery and stuff or the things that really make it look like he's made out of parts. But uh, that's all fun stuff that you can do in painting. I've also been impressed. I don't see any huge and hideous mold lines on these figures. They look pretty solid. Pretty solid. And is this a wear tiger? I can't remember. Um, again, nice looking figure with big mutton chop sideburns. He's got a nasty curved... This isn't even a knife at this point. This is uh, some sort of a hooked short swordish, um, nasty cutter, um, clawed hand open, 
like he's going to rip somebody's throat out. Uh, nice cloak on his back. I would definitely go so far as to say he's probably a shifter of some sort, but uh, you know, very solid. And then we go with the three hero characters. Again, I don't have the cards, nor do I remember the characters, but we have Big Dude with a Warhammer, Sledgehammer, I should say. He looks like he'll be fun. Uh, almost assuredly some sort of uh, melee champion. We have Warrior with Two Swords. I think his name was Sicarius. And he looks like he's a good uh, lightweight duelist. Yeah. Solid detailing with all of his weapon pouches on his back. Kind of a wavy, crisp blade on the one sword, and the other is a bit hooked. Almost like a little uh, little falchion to it. And then the other hero character, I, again, can't remember her name. It's kind of Rosa or something. But she is one of the characters, and i got to give him a lot of credit for it. Most of the uh, hero characters in any of these games are going to be uh, willowy with you know large chest and everything. She's she's curvaceous. She's not you know dumpy or anything, but she's you know she is not toned. She looks like she's definitely going to bust you up with magic. However, um, and I like the sculpt. Um, it goes away from the kind of fantasy traditional. Uh, views on, on beauty of the hero character, uh, which I like. All right. Now, because this is going to be a lot of copies of the same molds, I'll just give you a representative sample. We've got the uh, Dark Dwarves with their huge hammer slash axe-headed weapon. Um, again, good detailing, even though this is just a mob monster that will be attacking players in batches. Um, looks pretty good. We have four of those in the tray. Uh, this is a goblin fighting with a, uh, a functional looking dagger and a forked sword. Um, okay. He's got a shield on his back too, giving him a defensive option. Um, the, I like the tall caps. I like that style. That's something a little bit better than just throwing a generic helmet on. Uh, not bad. Detailing is, is solid. You can see enough details of the face that uh, painting will draw that out. We have orcish, or sorry, goblinish archers. Um, again, nice detailing. Everybody's got enough equipment and uh, that you believe they could. You know, they're, they're, the race survived. They're not just dropped in the middle of the game. This one's got enough arrows so that he can fire. They realize that if you have an archer, you better have him with some weapons that he can use. And then we have dwarves with cleavers. Large pole cleavers. That they use two-handed. Some would say that's to uh, make up for their lack of height and everything. I think it's just these dwarves. It looks like it's there so that they can mess somebody up. And these dwarves have huge amounts of hair, too, not just their beards. Uh, their hair goes all the way down below their waist, um, which is a nice cultural look. Again, they have the conical helms. Nice, uh, nice detailing. I like that. Um, very, very solid. We have these orcish champions with their battle axes in one hand and a small buckler style shield in the other. Hi, how's it going? Um, kind of a, a uni unikilt, utilikilt, um, but otherwise bare chested, which works for the orc uh, mindset. Uh, the axe looks interesting. I like the geometric style of the axe. Uh, all in all, solid looking figure. Two of those in this. There were two of the orc, or two of the dwarf cleaver guys. We have these look like more orcish skirmishers. Two swords, uh, a little lighter build than the axe guys. 
These look like the kind of mobs that you just, uh, with their kind of crudish swords, they'll just be following the boss and piling on. A pair of those. Yes, kitty. Oh, yes. Then we have, I'm guessing he's the boss of the orcs. He's got a large Tetsubo style club. Uh, the three horned helm. Uh, again, utilicilt, bare chested. Not as bulky, um, but solidly trunked. He doesn't look like he's quite as cut, but he's definitely somebody that you would pay attention to, especially if he's swinging that, at, that club at you. We've got what looks like a goblin shaman, twisted branch staff. His conical helm or headdress has a pair of spikes coming off of it. Skull on his back because, of course, they do. Um, he just kind of looks, he looks creepy, honestly. Kind of a nasty looking bit of business. Um, suspect he's probably got some sort of magic attacks. We have, I believe this is their agent. The agents, uh, this is the goblin agent. Uh, agents are kind of nasty. The bosses are tough because they've got a, uh, an ablative shield of uh, mob creatures that follow them around, and you have to kill them before you can directly strike at the boss. The boss is tougher because he can oftentimes have a piece of gear that makes him more dangerous that the players can loot. Agents, on the other hand, can spawn more mobs to come and attack the characters, as well as being tough opponents themselves. So... Uh, they become a significant part in the game, I believe. Then I think this is the dwarf boss. Better armored than the others with a large hammer. It just looks tough. Again, solid detailed, solid design. Very dwarven aesthetic. Long hair going down his back and a bunched up beard at his front. I'm picturing all of these guys with dark black... Um, hair and possibly a kind of swarthier skin tone too. I think this guy is the agent. Most of the agents have two weapons, I believe. Uh, cleaver in one hand, smaller hammer in the other. Uh, again, looks like a tough combatant. Hair's a little shorter in the back, beard's a little shorter in the front, nice scale detailing in the armor. One of the few that you can see the armor from all the hair from the dwarves. But uh, yeah, solid looking figure. No complaints. Then we've got this guy, who, again, definitely shamanly looking. I wonder if he's the orc shaman. Uh, kind of a nice staff uh, in one hand with the top of what looks like a bone, a tibia or fibia bone. And then he's got a kind of a wavy, crisp, uh, ritual dagger in the other hand. The skull on the top has some nice detailing. It looks like a feather on the top. Uh, his cloak is furred, furry cloak. He's got fetishes and things around his, his waist. Again, a very nice detail on this. I do like this character. Many of these characters I can easily see going into my regular games. But uh, these guys I'm not going to take out of the tray yet. At some point in the future, yes, but right now, no. So then we also have the lava and crystal sets. And to take this off, I'm not going to resort to the wakazashi. Muscle power will have to do it for me. So if these are the size of the tiles in the game, this gives a nice amount of play space without having to use all of them to feel like you have a decent sized dungeon. And again, the art on them is pretty nice too. They're broken up into nine zones per tile. Some of them are light, some of them are shadowed, so that your characters can use the different abilities. And because you're not likely to have the gem tiles at the same time you're going to have lava tiles, they're back to back. Each one with a different design from the others. 
this is going to beg for the use of bridges and things, but I have other resources for bridges and such. I didn't feel like I had to get the plastic pack for that. So, yes. Again, each of these does a pretty decent job of showing a flow of traffic and travel between stairs and chambers and some dynamic pieces that you could make all kinds of designs for. And anything that adds on to the variation that you can get with the core set in my mind is was a valuable add-on. So then we have the uh, pads for the add-on character, the Bone Crusher, um, which was one of the later things to be kickstarted, as I remember right. Um, what I will be doing, most certainly, is taking a couple of these and laminating them so that they can be used again and again, um, and then uh, cleared with, with marker. But uh, as far as pads, I think there's about 20 copies here. Certainly would make it rather easy to uh, you know design, to set out your character. And what these do basically is they give your character a class with some special abilities they'll have. The basic abilities are going to be at the top, and then you can take your experience and buy new abilities and advance them along the track which will help you to customize your character so that you can play two bone crushers for instance who have different powers and different one of them may be a tank who increases his health first the other one may be the striker and in increasing his damage dealing abilities we have the massive darkness dice bag which is empty at the moment because i haven't opened the main pack and then we come to the final thing which is the cards that go over all of this stuff. Oh, I spoke a little too soon. There's also the artifacts that were unlocked. Uh, the thrust of the main campaign is to find these artifacts so that you can ultimately win against the darkness. And as different characters got unlocked, the idea was that there was going to be a different artifact for each character. And I think that later on turned into each class. Like the Bone Crusher's Pauldron, the Priest Reliquary, assists, Assassin's Cloak. These are all the strongest magical items in the game. They come in their own special mini cards. The cards themselves um, are the things that uh, show your character what uh, the different abilities are. Many of them have scaling elements so that if you're playing with more characters, the monster is more powerful. If you're playing with fewer characters, the monster is less powerful and remains within their ability to be defeated. They have special abilities for some of the characters, and also their combat statistics, which are arranged in such a way that if, say, the monster has a an item that they're toting around they could use, you would put it right below the card and you would add any numbers so that a character with a strong melee attack, for example, who ends up getting a sword, will have that number right below, and you would just add those where possible. So, uh, this was probably some of the cards that, uh, that, were, that had to be replaced. Either that or they were ones from the main set. Not sure. But this is all of the extra stuff that everybody who kickstarted the game got, above and beyond the main set. Stay tuned, and I will be opening up the main set and going over all of those details. And then later, I will also be going over all of the different box sets that we purchased. Um, all in all, so far, I'm pleased. Uh, I like all the figures. I paid quite a bit for all of this. So I'm glad to see that the turnaround for it was solid. Uh... So far, the figures that I've seen have met my expectations. I'm not grossly disappointed with any of them. And that's good. That's what you want in a Kickstarter. So um, when you next uh, see me, uh, we'll be hitting the box in Massive Darkness Unboxing Phase 2. I'll see you then. This is Rob here at the Lair of Omnisai. Thanks for watching.